Before I start, I have created a Patreon and we have a new goal for this month. If we reach our first 50 Patreons before the end of the month, we will start 2023 with a review of both Underground and Most Wanted, but I will give you a bigger update on this in the end as there's something else I want you to know. Also, we have a Discord server, I would like to see you there, all links in the description below. Need for Speed is held as the franchise which popularized police chases, with Most Wanted being for many the peak of this franchise, but most people don't remember police chases were a part of Need for Speed way before Most Wanted, and I'm going to take you through every game where the police has taken part before Most Wanted. This is the evolution of police chases in Need for Speed. We need to start with its first release in 1994, known as the Need for Speed. This game game was released for a short-lived console known as the 3DO, and later ported to other platforms. For its time, it didn't have competition with real manufacturers and even a functional cockpit view. It features two different types of tracks, closed circuits where the cops aren't involved, and three different highway routes where different patrols are scattered across the road. Only a single unit will chase you through the track, and it can't really keep up with the player. In most cases, they will stop you right after a crash. Playing through this game is like going back in time. It has these over-the-top FMBs which were all the rage at the time of its release. Congratulations. You've just won an all-expenses-paid county vacation. Outside these quirks, there's little to describe about this early iteration of police chases. In most cases, they can't even approach your pace, making them kind of irrelevant. And the A seems to think the same, as this feature was removed from the sequel, Need for Speed 2 in 1997. It wouldn't be until the next year where the cops will start to shape the franchise as we know it today. In 1998, EA released the third iteration of the Need for Speed franchise, denominated Hot Pursuit. As the title suggests, the main feature of this game comes with police chases. This time they are a fully fleshed game mode named Hot Pursuit. What a surprise. This time, races take place in a circuit rather than an open route, and I'm fond of the track design in this game. You can divide them into sets of four, the first ones which are unlocked from the start, and the second set which are locked at first. I'll go through the unlock system a bit later, but the second set serves as an alternative route of the first four tracks. Say, instead of taking a right turn, you go left, and that opens a completely different layout. You will think there's a lot of copy and paste here. This isn't the case, as they share very few details between them. There's always enough room for a pair of patrols at your side. Cops don't take long to appear after the race starts, and this time they aren't cruising about. The first thing which stands out is their pace. Not only they can maintain your speed but overtake you with little effort. Once they get ahead, it can be a bit tricky to get past them, as they are quite good at blocking. I think there's a degree of input reading here, as they match your braking and throttle inputs, along with steering corrections. If they are by your side, they tend to be pretty aggressive, which sometimes works for them as they send you into a wall or a spin. The good thing is, ramming isn't as effective against the player. You are still at a disadvantage as crashing into patrols slow you down I think don't leave your side, but they aren't as crippling as some other games that we will see later on. If they can't stop you by normal means, then the first roadblocks will start appearing. These can be iffy, as they aren't impossible to pass through, but sometimes they are placed in awkward spots and these patrol cars tend to move to squeeze you in, which sometimes can then with them slamming onto your car and forcing you to stop. It can feel a slightly cheap when these roadblocks spawn in the most narrow areas of the track, and this is amplified once the infamous spike strips start appearing before roadblocks. Again, they aren't too hard to avoid unless they are placed on a very awkward spot or a patrol car blocks your narrow escape route. But if you touch a spike strip, your blistering career will deflate by the side of the road as police surrounds you and arrests you. Race over. Outside the spike strips, there's a timer of sorts which I couldn't figure 
routes. Usually the game works on a three strike mechanic where you can get busted two times and arrested at the third, but I found out I always got arrested without being busted a single time, which is slightly unforgiving for my taste, even more so when you consider these patrols will focus entirely on you, the player, and not on the AI opponent. Many times I was surrounded by patrols and my rival here can overtake me with ease. The only times where they can get in troubles is with roadblocks and spike strips. These can lead to them getting arrested instead, which is nice to see the AI facing the same consequences. During the race, you will hear different patrols yelling at the player to stop and they can come up with some funny lines. In this game, you don't hear the usual radio chatter with police codes regarding the pursuit, which gives it a different feel compared to future releases. It has a more casual and cartoony vibe, when paired with arcade physics where cars have a ton of grip, it all fits together just fine. There is one catch however, well, turns out Hot Pursuit is just another game mode in Need for Speed 3, a game mode where you don't unlock anything for your efforts, the only game modes where you can unlock anything are tournament and knockout. These modes involve a full grid of 8 racers counting the player without police. That's right, the game mode which comes to define the game isn't part of the main career. I find it a bit baffling given Hot Pursuit doesn't feel like an afterthought. To me it's just a leftover from the earlier releases, as they were still trying to see which formula works the best for players. Following this formula, the next Need for Speed was released in 1990. High Stakes. This game is an upgrade of the previous game. It does everything Hot Pursuit did just better. There's a new set of trucks based off real locations, and they do look much better, being a lot of fun to drive through them as well. For this game, the police radio becomes more professional as they start using codes. The most unique detail comes with the option of localized police officers, which talk over the radio on the native language of the truck you are currently racing in. You heard the men already, like and subscribe. But more important, the radio gives us a warning of roadblocks and spike strips, which is vital to avoid these career-ending hazards. The patrols behave in a similar manner as Hot Pursuit, with a few changes. They don't seem to have the blistering pace of the previous game, but they manage to be close. You can race, but there's no room for mistakes either. I think most of these changes come down to the different physics engine, which I find much better than Hot Pursuit. Cars have more weight and they are slightly less grippy. The speeds are lower across the board as well, but for me, these cars feel so much better. It is slightly more realistic than the previous release. Another detail which I love about this game is being able to turn your indicators by pressing L1 and the directional arrows on the D-pad, and if you press L1 and up, you can turn your headlights on and off. But really, the main gameplay change comes with the fact that you can play as a cop as well, chasing racers. They spawn individually, there's 10 racers to stop in a time limit. At first, this timer, which appears on the left corner of the screen, might seem generous, until you realize you have to stop all 10 racers in this time period. After each racer is stopped, you recover some time, but these gains become smaller and smaller after each stop, and they aren't generous to begin with. You really want to spend between 20 and 30 seconds at best on each each racer, which is a bit sad because it doesn't give you enough time to play with the different support units at your service. You can call for backup, which brings a second patrol controlled by the AI, which can be kind of useful, as it can arrest racers by itself, but you always miss out on the roadblock and the spike strip features. I don't know how this works, as they get rejected all the time, and they don't spawn. I think these are tied to a timer, which makes these features useless. There's a small progression in this mode. If you stop 10 racers, you will unlock a new patrol car. This can change depending on the country that you are racing in, which is a nice touch. Stop 10 racers again with this new car, and you will unlock the almighty Diablo patrol car. If you manage to catch all the racers with the Diablo, you will unlock a goddamn helicopter. It can only be used in test drive mode, but it's so cool. I just love it. With all these good features, however, high stakes 
doesn't fix the main flaw of Hot Pursuit, where police chases are totally separated from the game's career mode. Now, sure, this game has a lot of fun races and a new economy system. In this aspect, it's an improvement over Need for Speed 3, but we will have to wait some more to see cops in a career mode. And yes, I know the PC releases of these two games are different, but I played them on the PSX, <coughs> and this is my nostalgic trip. High stakes was followed but why many might seem as a left turn, Porsche Unleashed. And yes, I talked about this game before, it's really special to me and to car enthusiasts as a whole, so give it a watch if you haven't yet. Now, this will be swift, as there's not much to say. Patrols appeared in Factory Driver, which is a unique game mode to this game, but they don't really do much, in fact, I don't think they can arrest you, I never tried. For the PSX release, however, there's a mini game called Chase, where you are chased by a patrol car and you have to avoid this patrol from stopping you. It's not much really. The cops came back for the next release in 2002, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2, which is a bit weird given there's a 4 year gap between this and the original, where different titles were released. Doesn't make much sense to me. The first and most important upgrade in Hot Pursuit 2 comes with the introduction of a career mode, with police chases, at long last. This mode features 30 individual events, with most of them being races with 3 of their opponents in the grid. For the most part, these guys won't be much of a problem. Of course, they rely on the usual rubber band mechanics, which we are all well versed with. It is not as outrageous as in other titles, but it's there. Your main rivals in this game are the boys in blue, as they make up from being excluded from previous careers by being present in every single event. It doesn't take long long before a patrol car spots you or the other racers, starting yet another chase. There is a very basic wanted level of sorts, but it tends to max out rather quickly, making this feature pointless. There is always at least two patrol cars behind you, and even if you don't notice these patrol cars as you drive, you'll be made aware of their existence, as they try time and time again to ram you off the road. These guys come from a Chinese riot patrol, they don't stop beating until you are an unrecognized recognizable barbecue of metal and human laying on the side of the road. Combined with this aggressive AI comes the fact they benefit from a small nitrous boost, which the player doesn't have. It's almost impossible to have a small breathing gap between you and these pesky patrol cars. A slight tap from them sends your car flying off, almost as if the steering disengages for a few seconds. It's bizarre and frustrating as you can't do the same. Their cars are made of concrete and they don't even move after being rammed at high speeds. If anything, they can turn into you, forcing the player into a stop where they can't break away from in most cases. You have no resources to fight back against the cops unless you count using traffic cars to your advantage. You can take advantage on how the AI drives to force them into taking certain lines where they will crash into a traffic car or a wall. This crash unit will be too damaged to continue the chase, but they are replaced by another unit it in the blink of an eye, making this endeavor pointless. If you thought these cars were challenging, they are nothing compared to the police helicopter. This motorized mosquito breaks the game. The first thing this helicopter will do is drop explosive barrels all over the road, touch them and your car will be stopped in its tracks, most cases leading to an arrest. After some time, these barrels will also carry spike strips. The fact these explosive traps often lay across your ideal line means you'll be forced to slow down and maneuver through them, which becomes difficult with two patrol cars ramming you without a break. But nothing compares to the missiles. You heard that right. This helicopter can fire missiles at you, and they are almost impossible to avoid. Oh, come on, how was I supposed to avoid that? This is an ace combat. They have the same effect as the barrels, which makes them dangerous and ridiculously cheap. If you thought there's anything that can be done to stop this thing, you are wrong. Once it's in the air, it won't stop chasing you until the end of the race, and it won't stop trying to level the entire racetrack. The fact there's nothing you can do to even the odds makes the experience feel exhausting. Being left at the mercy of RNG as your car gets blown up or smashed. This flow was present in previous entries 
noticed, but it was more manageable. Now the unfixed flaws of the police behavior and advantage over the player become even more blatant. The fact you spend every race being chased from start to finish doesn't help either. Races in this game are unnecessarily long. There are events where you will race three times in the same track as a knockout tournament, but the game already features a lap knockout setup, dragging these events for longer than they have any right to be. The track design is also responsible, as tracks are massive, unnecessarily massive, and they become repetitive, with little variety on design. In this area, it is a step backwards compared to previous games, at least for me. By the end of the game, you will be racing for 15 minutes with patrols behind you. They only stop chasing you for a brief period of time after being busted. If you get caught three times, it's game over, and you will have to restart the entire race, which is an improvement from the random parameters of the previous games where you could be arrested after a single stop. I have to admit, I didn't get arrested once through my playthrough, but I did see the AI get arrested in one or two occasions. It's fun to see the cops finally recognize your opponents as targets, even if there are some shortcomings. In most cases, even if your opponents get ahead, they will struggle with roadblocks and often crash, allowing you to overtake them once again. Roadblocks are relatively easy to avoid, but they can be hard to spot. Personally, I couldn't find a single camera setting with a slight over-the-top perspective. It's hard to explain, but if you look at the screen, you can see how the car takes most of the screen, as the point of view is somewhat low. Sometimes this creates a situation where you are blind. Going through uphill sections shows this flow the most, where you won't see what lays ahead. It could be a roadblock, it could be a spike strip, or it could be a traffic car. These traffic cars can get so annoying, as they tend to be placed in blind spots, and if you crash, it's like your steering goes away for a vacation or something, at least for a brief moment. It's so strange and hard to describe. Despite this setback, I think the game is carried by its enjoyable driving physics. It is still a great arcade racer. Sure, at times you might go straight into a wall, but I blame having police cars on my back. Using the brakes is always important. Always remember that. While these cars are fun to drive, there's also an excellent selection of them, with all sorts of high-end sport cars. The way events are structured in this career mode means you'll have a shot at driving every car in the game, which is excellent. All in all, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 is the final evolution of the classic Need for Speed formula, which is a shame as a few missteps made this game feel dated and the score average reviews at the time of its release. Personally, I will always say the first release of the franchise for the sixth generation of consoles should have been Need for Speed Portion Leashed, a game which was ahead of its time and was able to rival any release in the genre. It's funny how the studio which developed this PS2 release, which I played and used the footage for this video, was developed by Blackbox, which, after Hot Pursuit 2, will go on to develop Underground 1 and 2, where the cops took a two-year break. But they came back with a vengeance for Most Wanted, a game which deserves a standalone review. But here, I have to admit my personal situation at the time. We have gone past the 1200 subscriber mark, and I can only thank you for the support. The fact so many people are willing to commit to this project of mine is still impressive. But I have to be honest, I started this year trying to build this channel at my own pace. In the background, I've been looking for different jobs the entire year. My original plan was keeping a job and YouTube on the side, but sadly I have been sending resumes for months to all sorts of companies and different openings, only to have no results. I am still sending resumes trying to find a job, but the economic reality of this country of mine means there's very little to do outside hoping for an answer. On these months, I have been supporting myself thanks to a few savings of mine, but costs keep increasing, and this savings account is running quite thin. I am not the type who spends money frivolously. In fact, I am the opposite. Given how little interest there seems to be on my resume, I might as well try to make YouTube work. After all, I use most of my day making content. If we can reach this Patreon goal, I can work on more videos, as this economic situation of mine is starting to wear me down, as much as I don't want to admit it. It's also proving to be quite restrictive, as if anything breaks, I can't replace it, or I can't afford any new releases which I would like to review for you all.
call or make different content related to car culture, which isn't as successful in views, but I want to make as nobody else is doing so. I know I am asking for much, but I would be lying if I said I know it can be done. All I can promise is I won't forget about any of those who helped me in this crazy goal of mine. I like to believe people see something in this channel in the same way that I do. Most of you are here thanks to my first video, and I like to believe quality has improved ever since. You can judge by yourself in the following playlists. I hope to see you soon for my next video. Until next time.